Broadcasting from Sydney, Australia, this is Front and Centre with Emilio Garcia. Brought to you by the Unshackled.net. The video comes from Project Veritas, James O'Keefe, who's got a less than stellar reputation for accuracy. Now we played you the shocking undercover videos. One showed conversations with two Twitter engineers who explained the tech giant's ability to shadow ban users and how algorithms have been used to disproportionately target conservatives. The undercover videos produced by discredited conservative activist James O'Keefe. He's the author of this brand new book, American Pravda. This is an important book. My fight for truth in the era of fake news. Convicted criminal and right-wing operative James O'Keefe has made a name for himself in recent years by catching progressives on film, doing or saying things that appear to be illegal. Uh, there's a video circulating now, whether it's accurate or not, uh, I don't know, but I would encourage everybody in this room and frankly, everybody across the country to take a look at it. Uh, I think if it is accurate, I think it's a disgrace to all of media, to all of journalism. A skewed ideology has taken over the management of some of the most powerful communication proxies in the world. The move to broaden the definition of hate speech and subsequently shut it down is a practice common across industries and companies. James O'Keefe, founder of Project Veritas, has exposed many of the shady tactics of these organizations and has gained huge notoriety because of it. Because there's no virtue in passing untrue information along to the masses, so oftentimes people are they're, they're most likely to be honest in private. And we'll be talking to him about Twitter, the mainstream media, and Project Veritas after this short break. I want to take a second and ask you to go to theunshackled.net and download your free ebook, The Unshackled Battlefield. Learn about the founding principles of The Unshackled and what made the organization what it is today. And since I have you, don't forget to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks, and now back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center. I'm Emilio Garcia. On today's episode, we're talking about a variety of issues with James O'Keefe from Project Veritas. We'll start with the subject. Uh, which is very personal to me, which is called shadow banning. Now, shadow banning is essentially a process that Twitter undertakes in which it will allow certain people to continue to use their platform, but not distribute their content. In other words, I can take my phone and tweet out to my followers something that I'm thinking in the moment, and it will appear to me as if that tweet actually went out into the ecosphere. However, Twitter is actually not showing that tweet to almost anybody. The idea here is that people will just think that people have stopped engaging with their content and eventually just stop using the platform. My Twitter account, at FRNTN Center, has been shadow banned, despite the fact that there is no hateful rhetoric or even far-right rhetoric, and anyone who looks through my timeline will be able to see this. James O'Keefe is actually the one who exposed Twitter's practices by filming their employees without their knowledge. A recording that Project Veritas released uh, about Twitter and a practice they called shadow banning. And shadow banning is essentially a process where Twitter basically lets people continue to use their platform but doesn't distribute their content to their followers. Uh, so since you brought this to light, why don't you give me a, a few of your thoughts on this? Well, the, the, Twitter engin the Twitter engineers we spoke with were shadow banning or muting information that they were trying to give to their followers. And I think it's, it's one of the most important censorship issues of our time, that, that people distribute most of the information through social media companies, and if those media companies prevent information from getting to the, uh, the, to the viewer, they're rewiring democracy. They're, they're changing the way we communicate. This is not an understatement. Social media has tipped the scales of power and provided anyone with the resources to reach the masses. Michael Joel, author of Six Pixels of Separation, explains this best. Suddenly, we have these platforms and tools and technologies that have given rise to the ability for anybody to congregate, create groups, activism, uh, passion, and so yeah, you are seeing a huge surge in activism. All of this leads to a fundamental question. Why does Twitter allow people to use their platform not distribute their content and have them think that they're still using the platform regularly and not just ban them all together. You know, Twitter is a private organization and they can do as they please. Uh, 
The one thing that I don't get, and maybe you have a perspective on this, is what is the benefit of allowing people to continue to use the platform and just not distribute the content? Why not just ban them completely? Well, according to the engineer, um, I think banning them completely might be too obvious. It might send the wrong message. It would, it would, it, people would know that they're being banned. The thing about shadow banning is people do not know that they're being uh, censored. Uh, they do not know that their information is not getting to their followers. And one of the engineers in the tape specifically says that this is a technique that has been utilized at Twitter. And they specifically target people who tweet sort of conservative things like God, guns, the Bible, uh, American flag. They actually have algorithms that create keywords for these things that weigh certain things greater than others so that, um, so that it uh, uh, targets conservative ideas. Following the release of this information by Project Veritas, Twitter denied the allegations. Twitter does not shadow ban accounts. We do take action to downrake accounts that are abusive and mark them accordingly so people can still click through to see these accounts if they choose. In other words, they do shadow ban people. They just call it something different. Some may think that it's appropriate to downgrade abusive content, but I can tell you that as a person who has a shadow banned account, that I've been censored having never abused or discriminated against anyone on Twitter. Large companies such as CNN have downplayed Twitter censorship, not completely ignoring it, but putting no pressure on the statements Twitter defends itself with and taking them at their word. This is mostly because the mainstream media has moved to label Project Veritas as a discredited organization. Now, to them, this can be true, uh, especially since Project Veritas is not free from controversy. And one of the things that they tried to discredit you with was a, a story that they, they attached to Project Veritas during the Roy Moore election, where there was a woman who cl uh, claimed some crazy story about Roy Moore impregnating her and then taking her to get an abortion. Why not just come out and tell these reporters who were asking you uh, whether this woman was or wasn't working for Project Veritas if she was indeed working with you? We'll be exploring this after this short break. Did you know that Front and Center is on Twitter? Twitter is the easiest way to connect directly to me. My Twitter handle is FRNT and Center. Again, that's FRNT and Center. And though many of you will not be able to find my shadow band account right away, you can find me because of my free speech loving followers who are constantly interacting with me. And since I'm plugging myself here, why not subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts? Thanks, and now, back to the show. Welcome back to Front and Center, I'm Emilio Garcia. At this point, we're talking about some of Project Veritas's controversies. During a congressional race in Alabama, the fourth most conservative state in the US, a candidate called Roy Moore was accused by many of rape and sexual assault. During this election, Project Veritas decided to plan a sting using the controversy of Roy Moore against the Washington Post. It's a, a story that they, they attached to Project Veritas during the Roy Moore election, where there was a woman who cl uh, claimed some crazy story about Roy Moore impregnating her and then taking her to get an abortion. And uh, what the Washington Post said that that, uh, it kind of did their research and realized that that wasn't true. And several, several reporters kind of approached you trying to ask if this woman was working for Project Veritas. But my question is, this is the MO of Project Veritas, going in, uh, right. pretending that you are someone who you are not, and trying to see if you can expose some, some shady uh, tactics. Why not, uh, why not just tell the reporters from the Washington Post or from CNN who are asking you if this woman who claimed to be impregnated by Roy Moore was working for you, whether or not she was? Well, two reasons. Number one, we don't identify the names of our undercover journalists. We don't identify investigations before they've been come to their conclusion. But this was the, the I mean, I was caught off guard uh, on that day, and I was confronted with information that was incomplete. And I, and I couldn't, it wouldn't be responsible for me to give a comment until I had all the information about the, the operation. Fair enough point. It's worth mentioning that reporters approached O'Keefe after that initial contact, a fact that I learned after the interview, which is why I didn't ask him about it then. Ultimately, the claim to discredit him have been many and have taken very different forms. These are groups that aren't being attacked by, by anyone really because they, uh, 
they kind of fit into the norm of what people think is wonderful. Uh, however, there were a couple of things that maybe people said had Project Veritas not framed it this way, it would have been harder for them to be discredited. So for example, the pimp incident, which was uh, an incredible story about you going into Acorns uh, and basically getting, getting uh, assistance from Acorns while they thought that you were indeed a pimp mm -hmm. or a prostitute. Um, but then it turns out that, that the, the pimp, uh, the whole uh, pimp outfit wasn't in fact what you were wearing in the offices, right? And even though I don't think that's really material to what is contained in the video, uh, doesn't that kind of kind of uh, affect the the impact that Project Veritas can have by kind of muddying the waters and sully and giving people an opportunity to sully you? You're talking about the pimp prop, the pimp costume. What, whether that muddies the waters? I mean, the people said what they said. I mean, does pimp protocol? Work? I mean, I, so so just so your audience understand what's going on here. I, I posed as a pimp and went into Acorn and said I want to start a brothel. For context, Acorn is a US-based nonprofit financial company aimed at helping low-income people to better handle their money. And in the B-roll, that's the bumper as we call it in television, CNN has a hologram machine, Daily Show has an introductory sort of music segment. So in this introductory music segment, I wore the pimp costume and people said, aha! The whole video must be fake because O'Keefe wore a, a pimp fur in the bumper. And I say, well, but I did present myself as a pimp inside of the offices. I did say I wanted to whore out underage girls, and they did tell me how to get around the issue. And that's what got them in trouble, not the fact that I was wearing a pimp costume in the bumper. So I think it's an attempt to obfusc obfuscate. In all fairness and in the interest of objectivity, I'll present the opposition's argument Although I think that much of what Rachel Maddow says here is incorrect. James O'Keefe the third and Hannah Giles uh, got the right wing in this country very excited when they released supposedly incriminating undercover videos that they filmed at local Acorn offices across the country. They claimed the videos showed Mr. O'Keefe and Ms. Giles dressed as a pimp and a prostitute receiving assistance and advice from Acorn about how to do stuff like smuggling underage girls into the country and securing funding for their illegal prostitution business. The tapes that were aired on Fox News in a seemingly constant loop were, quote, severely edited, in his words, the Attorney General released the unedited tapes. The thing that was supposed to be so shocking about this scandal in the first place was the accusation that Acorn employees willingly helped a pimp and a prostitute skirt the law, even though it was perfectly clear that they were a pimp and a prostitute. Check out the unedited tape. Now, wait a second here. See that dress shirt that's visible as Mr. O'Keefe opens the door and exits the office? It's a dress shirt. Consider this. During that same not-in-a-pimp suit trip to Acorn San Diego office is the rest of the video, which shows the Acorn employee pressing, pressing, pressing for as much information as he could possibly get from these two people in his office. So why is he asking for stuff like phone numbers, dates of arrival, specific locations, all these details? What, what's this Acorn guy going to do with all that information? What does he do with all that information? Oh, he calls the police and reports what they've told him is going to be a crime. Quoting from the Attorney General's report, immediately after the couple left, Mr. Vera telephoned his cousin, Detective Alejandro Hernandez, at the National City Police Department and said that a self-admitted prostitute had been to the office and was discussing human smuggling. This brings us to the centrist conclusion segment of the program. A cozy relationship between similar-minded communication proxies is generating a dangerous situation. By agreeing what language and opinions are okay, anyone who does not confirm these ideologies is labeled a bigot and silenced. James O'Keefe is helping keep those organizations in check with his work at Project Veritas. I have followed Project Veritas's work and though I believe a couple of times their editing has been misleading, I believe they're doing very good work. James O'Keefe is an award-winning journalist who has created tangible change, and I thank him for being part of the show. That's the end of Front and Center. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you to The Unshackled for allowing us to use their platform. If you have any ideas or opinions, tweet at me at FRNT and Center, or find me on Facebook, or read the most interesting comments on the air. Remember to subscribe on iTunes, Stitcher, or wherever you get your podcasts. There are always two sides to the story, so keep it central. Thanks for tuning in to Front and Center. Please visit frontandcenter.net.au for all the ways to subscribe and follow the show.
Don't forget to pick up your free ebook at theunshackledbattlefield.net. And keep checking out theunshackled.net for all the latest news and commentary.